Oh, here we go. Good evening and welcome back to the fastest half hour in the cryptid world, This Week in Bigfoot. The news show that scours the internet and the Bigfoot community each and every week to bring you the people, places, and stories making headlines around the Bigfoot world. Then we take it and wrap it up in a nice, neat 30-minute package. If it has to do with Sasquatch, Bigfoot of the Wild Man, you know we've got you covered. Here's what we're looking at for this week's show is Southeast Kentucky, where Bigfoot go to bury their dead. One researcher, Thomas Markham, poses the question. Mike Lucci takes a look at Germany's new Wolfman photo. Snowwalker's at it again in a brand new hilarious two minutes with, and it's Legend Meets Science 2 update time with the boss himself, Doug Hycheck. These stories and more Bigfoot news than you could ever possibly swing a stick at, so you better grab a drink and settle in and smash that subscribe button, because we're going to get at it. Let's go. The history of the bluegrass state is filled with a variety of curious characters. Kentucky, like many other states in the South, has a rich tradition of folklore that reflects its history, culture, and diverse people who live there throughout time. The state's oral traditions encompass a wide range of legends, superstitions, and practices that have been passed down over the generations. From ghost stories and hauntings to hillbilly feuds and witchcraft, Kentucky checks all the boxes when it comes to high strangeness. But once you cross over the mountains into southeastern Kentucky, only one legend comes to mind. That's Bigfoot. And in this part of the Appalachians just might be the place where Bigfoot buries its own dead. At least that's what one researcher thinks. Thomas Markham, founder of the Crypto Crew, a cryptozoology and paranormal research group based in Kentucky and author of Understanding Bigfoot, has been pondering this question for almost a year now. Last December, Markham posted on his blog a video of strange mounds he found while exploring the woods of Bell in Harlan counties and asked if these could be Bigfoot graves. But this is another, I've never found this one before. This is another mound of dirt right here. It's probably, I don't know. Let's see. One, two, three. You're talking about nine feet in length. Uh, unusual hump of dirt. So, you know, I got, I got misquoted, mischaracterized on sharing the last information about those. I had by one to claim that I said they were Bigfoot. No, I did not. I was asking if anybody else had found them, and I said they possibly could be Bigfoot, but they could be a lot of other things. Markham describes the sites as two large mounds of dirt and rock, roughly 30 to 40 feet apart, deep in the woods of southeastern Kentucky, in an area where several hikers, campers, and researchers have had Bigfoot encounters and have found many large and unusual footprints. Natural, Markham admits that the mounds may be nothing more than natural formations or something earlier settlers did a very long time ago. Thomas Markham has been researching Bigfoot for more than 20 years now and has claimed to have seen the creature on more than one occasion. Speaking to the Middleborough News last week, he said he's had many sightings in that particular area where he found the mounds. The well-known and respected researcher went on to say that one of the biggest misconceptions is when it comes to Bigfoot is that most people believe that the creature only lives in certain parts of the country like the Pacific Northwest. Thomas had plenty of sightings of Bigfoot in Kentucky, he went on to say, starting as a teenager, and he's also talked to dozens of people who have also claimed to see the creature in the state. Recently, the television show Expedition Bigfoot spent time filming in the same area, and according to Markham, it should come as no surprise that some Bigfoot creatures have chosen the Bluegrass State to call home, as it lies in the Goldilocks zone of the United States, not too hot and no extreme cold temperatures. And the state's game and wildlife provides an abundance of food sources for the massive bipedal. There's also plenty of natural caves and old coal mines for shelter, according to Thomas, who's researched extensively in Harlan County and considers it prime real estate for Bigfoot. Kentucky in general has long been a hotspot for Bigfoot sightings and encounters, as it seems every other week or so right here on the show, Mike Lucci has another video or photo coming out of the state. Since posing his question, Thomas Markin has taken some heat over whether the mounds he photographed were actual Bigfoot graves. But to be honest, if you watch the video and pay attention, he never says that they are. He only posed the question, could they be? I said they were Bigfoot. No, I did not. I was asking if anybody else had found them, and I said they possibly could be Bigfoot, but they could be a lot of other things. 
Now, if you live in Kentucky and have had a sighting, or maybe you found similar mounds during your investigations, let us know in the comment section. And if you'd like to watch Thomas's entire video, you can do so by checking the link in the description. I found some rather peculiar footage of an alleged Bigfoot encounter that was reportedly caught on film in central Oregon. It was posted on the Squatch Mafia YouTube channel a couple of days ago, so we'll go ahead and play some of that clip for you right now. Oh, there it is. We've seen this thing before. Dude, what is that? It's fucking Yeti. I'm not kidding. That thing's... We've oh seen God. it multiple times. Oh my God. Oh my God. It's coming over here. <laughs> it's coming. It's, it's, it's coming over here. Go inside. Oh my God. Oh, it went, it went down again. Oh my God. What is that? Oh my God. It's fucking big. Can someone get the flashlight? Go get the flashlight, Eric. Holy fuck. What the fuck is that? Nobody, everybody's inside. Where's Eric? It's behind the bush again. It's behind the ridge. That's gotta be what that sound is. A what? I can, my it's behind the bush over there. It was definitely on two legs. Yes, it was walking. Holy crap. Holy crap. Yeah, that spotlight. It's going to pop up. Like, yeah, turn that off. It's right there. Oh, right yeah, there. I see it. It's right there. Oh, there it is. Yeah, you're on it right now. Where? Right there. You see it right there? It's huge. See it over there? Right there. You see it walking? Dude, that's on two legs. Watch it. Get the can get the flashlight on it. Hey! Hey! Oh, that's a fucking great. Oh, my God! Oh, my God! Pretty harrowing stuff, huh? Anyway, we'll just get a uh, quick fundamental analysis out of the way. As many commenters noted, to start us off, the arm length is definitely a little too short for comfort. Our figure in question also spent a lot of time out in the open, completely exposed with multiple people screaming and uh, shining flashlights on it. Uh, pretty uncharacteristic behavior for a creature that's supposed to be actively avoidant of humans. It's also got your classic blurriness, shakiness, uh, the subject going in and out of frame, all the fundamentals for a uh, classic Bigfoot video. The original footage comes from a channel called Colin Haggerty and was originally published on July 28, 2018. The description alleges they have encountered this creature multiple times and that this video was filmed by Mr. Haggerty's friend's cousin. Haggerty does make an interesting comment about when the figure moves towards him and his friends, claiming the figure wasn't looking for anything on the ground and alleges it was making an aggressive gesture towards them, of which he says the video does not do justice. Of course, upon drawing attention to this part of the film, it becomes apparent that there's a cut in this video precisely at the 1 minute 53 second mark that Haggerty draws attention to. See for yourself. Aside from this particular video, there are three others in Haggerty's channel that appear to be additional footage of the alleged subject. The next video was posted on September 29th, 2018, which is supposedly more footage of the same figure taken back in May. The third video was posted on October 1st and is a better quality version of the September 29th footage. I actually found the same September 29th video on another channel called Samuel Anderson. It was posted on May 12, 2018, whose description is similar to Collar Haggerty's July 28th video. In both versions, you even hear someone off camera refer to another individual as Sam at the 26 second mark. So this is likely the same Samuel Anderson as the uh, other channel. Now, just to clarify, we don't believe this was directly produced by Squatch Mafia, and it's possible this could have already come out as a prank or something like that, so if that's the case, uh, definitely let us know. Otherwise, we've laid out everything about this footage that we thought was worth mentioning, and we'll turn it over for you to decide if whether or not these videos are fact or hoax. It could be easily just someone messing around in a suit. 
This Week in Bigfoot recently sat down with Doug Hycheck, fresh off his trip to Snellgrove Lake deep in the Canadian interior, so he could bring us up to speed on what turned out to be a harrowing, yet quite interesting weekend. All right, Doug, good to see you, man. I, you know, I've been telling, I told the viewers you had a lot of going on with the LMS2 thing, and, uh, you know, you just got back from uh, the in, upper interior of Canada. What happened up there at Snowgrove? Well, after um, three days of travel, um, we made it out to Snell in two different groups. And <clears throat> I was doubtful only because I haven't been there in eight years that there'd be any activity, right? First night, tons of activity. Second night, more activity. Third night, terrible weather. Fourth day during the day activity mm -hmm. um, to the point of literally one of the researchers that was up there coined a new phrase that I'd never heard. He made it up just to try to describe what had happened up there it was so dramatic. You know, you know, I really can't get into any details, but I will say it was active, like really active. And people were scared, including me. Um, people were very, and then the, the one guy, there was a military guy up there and he wasn't, I wouldn't say scared, but he was concerned. <laughs> that's, that's a, that's a, that's a, uh, uh, PC way of saying he was scared shitless. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Yeah. So, um, but, um, nighttime activity, daytime activity, we had a lot of cool technology up there. Um, mm -hmm. part of the technology we brought up, which was a camera system um that is five over 500 iso can pretty much see in almost total darkness but it needs a moon it needs right. stars but we had total cloud cover and no moon for the first three days so that camera was useless you know it's just kind of the right. way it goes but we had other cameras and we had other things and we did record every night with cameras with audio that were you know rolling 24 7. In other words, you know, they're not triggered by anything. They're just recording every moment. Then we had audio recorders. And that's really all, all a person can do. But, uh, man, we, we captured lots of stuff. <laughs> that's good. For, for, those yeah. not, uh, for those not familiar with Snellgrove Lake, I believe it's up in the upper, upper interior of Canada, and it's quite infamous, I should say, yeah. um, for a lot of uh, Bigfoot activity. You want to give us some broad strokes so... A lot of people might hear Snowgrove, and they might not exactly sure. know what you're talking about. So um, I started going to Snowgrove back in the 90s as just a place to get away because it had a solar-powered um, electrical system. You could run lights at night. It had an on-demand hot shower system that pulled water out of the lake. You could take a hot shower in the cabin. It had a sink. Didn't have, you know, didn't have a restroom, but it had a sink. Mm -hmm. What else would a person need, right? Just right. it was luxury in the wilderness. So I was going there for many, many years, um, sometimes three, four times a year. Um, and then we brought our daughters up one time and all hell broke loose. And it's been crazy ever since up there. And it was just as crazy. It was literally probably more crazy this time than I'd ever experienced it almost. Really? Yes. And it's really hard to describe. Let's put it this way. I got a text when one of the researchers who is extremely well seasoned, this guy's done expeditions from coast to coast. Mm -hmm. He sent me a text on his way back before, you know, right before he boarded his plane. He said that was the most incredible expedition he had ever been on. And the, this is this. Now, this will be footage that will be in LMS2, correct? Correct. Yes. Excellent. Yep. Everything will be revealed in um, LMS2. Short for Legend Meets Science too, and um, you know I'm really excited to actually get all the footage gathered now and start reviewing it, which I have not had time to do. We'd like to thank Doug for stopping by and filling us in, and I'd like to remind you as well that this week in Bigfoot is the only place you get your exclusive Legend Meets Science two production updates. If it happens on the film production, you'll hear about it here first. Now you can still pre-order the film or donate to the project and get your name in the credits. And I think it's only 10 bucks. That's the minimum. Of course, you can give much more. And you can do both at HangarOnePublishing.com. Bigfoot reports from Europe are pretty far in between. And while this story coming out of Germany isn't necessarily Bigfoot related, 
it definitely sheds light on some notable aspects about the Bigfoot phenomenon. Two hikers reportedly took this photo of what's being described as a naked wolf man, which was reportedly taken in a spot of the Hards Mountains called the Sand Caves. This particular area is located near Blankenberg, Germany, which is roughly 150 miles from Berlin. The two hikers say their encounter lasted about 10 minutes, during which they said the figure wouldn't take their eyes off them while passing. One of the hikers said, quote, When we reached the sand caves, we saw the wolf man. He stood up high on one of the caves and held a long wooden stick like a lance in his arm. They said the man looked to be about in his 40s and resembled something from a prehistoric era. Now, officials in the area apparently aren't unfamiliar with these reports. In fact, they've been getting them for about five years now. All of us describe a wolf man or man that's draped in wolf fur or costume. One of the most recent encounters happened back in March when police received reports of a wolf man running through the woods. Of course, when emergency services arrived on scene, the uh, culprit was nowhere to be found. Although members of the local fire brigade have even reported spotting a similar figure, one local fire service volunteer claims this most recent photo was nonsense and is a prank. But that's all I've been able to find out about that specific claim. So definitely let us know in the comments if you have any follow-up information. Now, if you look at the story through a Bigfoot lens, you could argue if something like this wolf person is being spotted by people in Germany, a country that's roughly the size of Montana, then it makes the prospects of something like a squatch hiding in the much vaster North American wilderness, which has some areas where all of Germany could probably fit in, that much more conceivable. On the flip side, this could also be a telling example of potential misidentifications that might actually account for a good chunk of legend Bigfoot, um, even dogman encounters. The story is also eerily reminiscent of the segment I covered in episode 14 of the so-called witches that were caught on film convening around a deer carcass in British Columbia. So in addition to what aspects of the big phenomenon the story puts into perspective, I suppose it also serves as a chilling reminder that the woods can hide a lot more than a potential Bigfoot. And sometimes what we know is real what we know definitely exists and is lurking in the woods can be a lot scarier than what we're trying to find. It's that time again, folks. Check your watches and you can tell we're halfway through the episode. And it's the part of the show where we give content creator Michael Merchant, a.k.a. Snowwalker Prime, screen time to speak his mind and get what's ever bothering him off his chest. Now, last week he did a bang-up job. It's going to be pretty tough to beat. But here he is again. This is Two Minutes With. Echo Station 3 k Spotted an aerial walker. Aerial walker. Echo Station 3 k We have spotted an aerial walker. Aerial walker. Bigfoot, dog man, and an alien walk into a bar. The bartender says... What is this, a congressional oversight hearing? So MK says that nothing was added, nothing was taken away. It was not AI. No AI was used. Have you heard of the term beating a dead horse? I'm just, I'm just trying to get you to admit that you're wrong. Look, I'm not wrong and I can prove it. Well, I'd like to see your proof, Mr. Man, because from where I'm standing, it seems like you're just picking on MK, hating on MK. You're a hater, a Bigfoot non-believer and a hater. Bigfoot walks into a bar. He said, ouch. I'm not hating on MK. I actually like MK. It doesn't appear like you like him. You just keep saying it over and over again that, that it's AI, it's AI, it's been AI and ants. Your ex admitted to using 10 to 15 upscalers. He also stated that no two images are alike. I, I don't understand your point. No two images are alike, then he's adding information. If he wasn't adding anything and it was just tight, being tightened up, like MK says, yeah, yeah, tightened up, then you would expect the images to be exactly the same. He also doesn't specify what upscalers he's using. Hey, 
it is a proprietary technique. It's top secret. Nobody knows how he does it. Look, on top of Todd admitting to using upscalers, which are AI. A upscalers are AI. That's b using AI. No, MK says no AI was used. I know what MK says, but I'm telling you, Todd, Mr. X, says he used upscalers, which are AI. Potato, potato, tomato, tomato. So Bigfoot walks into a bar. The bartender says, where the hell have you been? Everybody's looking for you. Take a look at the reflection in the eyeball of Patty. I know, it's amazing. It's beautiful. You can see the eyelashes and the teeth. You can also see a guy in the catch light of Patty's eye. A guy! I know, it's amazing, right? Did you hear what I said? There's a guy in the reflection of Patty's eyeball. Once again, I, I don't understand your point. Chuck Norris went looking for Bigfoot. He found him. The only thing you should be seeing in Patty's eye is Bluff Creek, maybe Roger Patterson on a horse. You're not gonna see a guy peeking in the eyeball. I'm, I'm confused, why is there a guy in the eyeball? Upscalers are not gonna create eyeballs. From, from, have you seen the original footage? The original footage is amazing. It's the Holy Grail. It's sacred. Show some respect when you speak about it. I'm not debating that the original footage is compelling. Footage taken in 1967 doesn't have the resolution to show the details. Bottom line is, the details are not there. They've been added by some process other than upscaling. Where is Bigfoot when he's on top of your house? He's on the rough, 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 rough. Bigfoot walks into a hair salon. The salon says, what do you need? Bigfoot says, just a little off the top. A lie. Last week on August 22nd, Small Town Monsters released the latest film on the trail of Bigfoot, Land of the Missing. Within the sprawling majestic landscapes and limitless wilderness of Alaska hides a chilling enigma. Uh, this is a Recognized topic. by locals and explorers alike, the mystery centers around the disturbingly frequent disappearances called, uh, happening throughout the land of the midnight if sun. They take you, I don't know where they take you. They're dark, like black, they are hairy. Kind of like a Bigfoot. Often these vanishings are attributed to events like avalanches, shifting landscapes, and encounters with native wildlife, including the state's large bear population. In the land of the missing, Seth Breedlove and company dared to venture into an alternative explanation for these mysterious disappearances. On the Trail of Bigfoot, Land of the Missing is available now on all major streaming platforms. You should check it out, courtesy of 1091 Pictures. And an exclusive Blu-ray version is available only at the Small Town Monsters store at smalltownmonsters.com. Hey, this is Chuck Larson. You're watching the CARC channel on YouTube. All right, so back in episode 19, I covered this video. While scouring the internet for some good segments, I stumbled across this by pure chance, a video from the Power Breakdown channel that literally covers this exact footage. We'll go ahead and play a clip from Phil's breakdown of it now. Even if he's telling the truth, the best that we have here for source is a secondhand story based on thirdhand information, so the source is questionable. The video itself is pretty interesting, and it shows a figure in silhouette climbing up over the hill. I applied some enhancement, including color enhancement, to get a better look at it, zoomed in on a little bit. Some of the things that strike me about this is, first of all, the arm length looks like that of an average man. As far as the no-neck look of the thing, I think that the guy's probably just watching his step and looking down as he walks. The color enhancement seems to show different color between a coat and pants. And if I'm not mistaken, it looks like it's wearing boots or shoes. Could I be wrong about this? The video was originally posted on a channel called Jabesy Cascade on March 30th, 2014. 
meaning Squatch Me Now, was correct on the year it was filmed. Unfortunately, the original footage is no longer on JBZ Cascade's channel, which currently has no published content whatsoever. The video's description said JBZ got this footage from his friend, whose son took it while hiking, just to establish a chain of custody. The Instagram post we looked at a few weeks ago said it was taken by a father and son, so close enough, I guess. JBZ claims his friend's son saw something cross the road he was walking on, during which he managed to grab his camera and catch the footage in question. Although it also mentions his friend would have more information in a couple of days, it'll probably be impossible to know if anything new ever came to light. Fortunately, this video was a little longer than the Instagram version we looked at in episode 19. It still cuts off rather abruptly, however, although this could be due to the cameraman losing sight of the figure while filming. So while we uncovered the origins of this footage, we still have no information on the exact date, time, or location it was filmed. The only assumption we can make is based on JBZ Cascade's username. So if the latter part is any indication, perhaps it means these people could potentially live in or near the Cascade Mountains, which spans from British Columbia all the way down to Northern California. So these new findings definitely clarify some important details. We learned where the footage originally came from, which was in fact a longer version than the Instagram one, but we still don't know exactly when or where it was filmed and probably never will. Even Phil, who holds a very high standard in his analysis, says nothing is absolute about this footage, but his enhancements definitely offer some good insight on what it could be. So, take these new findings into account, make sure to rewatch our initial segment about this video in episode 19, and let us know if your stance changes on whether or not you think this footage is fact or hoax. It's time to bring you up to speed on a couple of recent Bigfoot podcasts and live streams, first in the box, Ontario Cryptids. In this video, the hosts share part one of an habituation story from a Reddit user named Sasquatch Angie. Check it out. I started staying up most of the night. I never knew what might happen. I lived in constant fear. Constant gut-wrenching fear. They were a constant threat. I reached out to multiple Bigfoot groups for help. Everybody wanted pictures. Taking pictures is what got me in trouble. I do many pictures, no perfect picture. I spent hours in the woods taking pictures of their structures. I ignored the strong feeling not to enter certain areas. I ignored the signs they tried to send me to back off. I kept at it until they drew the line. Up to this point, I guess I didn't really believe what was happening myself. It was real, but it wasn't. It was a new mystery, a new interest, a new everything. And even though they had interacted with me, they never came out and met me face to face. Next up, it's the return of the confessionals to the show, episode 560, Smoky Mountain Monster Hunter. Here the guys speak with Brian Jeffrey from Black Mass Paranormal about his monster hunting adventures in and around the Smoky Mountains. Check it out. It's a very unique topic and it's a very taboo topic you know i get a lot of hate for speaking out on it it's ridiculous. Um, yeah i know i know it is um but it's it's a reality that i think that it's important for us to address you know yeah. um i don't think that we need to sweep it under the rug or even be embarrassed by it you know um yeah i i, yeah. I think it's a topic that should be talked about because so there's so many people that in the Bigfoot world, they're like, oh, well, you know, this is how they operate. They just, they see human beings and they just want to be left alone. They stay in the shadows and all that stuff. Well, take that same mentality with the feral people. It, that, that literally might be what's going on where they, they see us as a threat. And yeah. it's like, don't get too close. Right. And if you do, maybe you don't go home. Yeah. Uh, and, and what uh, Michael experienced that day, we don't know, but... The fact that his his four wheeler was turned off, but in the on position, almost as if he saw somebody, turned the engine off so you can talk to him to see if they're okay. Hey, buddy, okay? Gets off his his four wheeler to investigate. Are you all right, sir? Oh, gone, gone. Yeah. And batting cleanup this week, it's Sussex County Bigfoot. In the latest upload from New Jersey's Mike Famalot, 
we see him and his research partner, Jill, on a night hike when they come across someone or something laying waste to a tree not far from them in the Delaware Water Gap. Let's see if you can identify the creature in question. Check it out. Hmm. I have no idea what this is. I'm scared. I'm like really scared, Mike. It's okay. No, it's just let's this let's hang out for a second and try to figure this out. It sounds like something's scratching a tree. I'm thinking it's a bear. Yeah, I don't want to be near a bear. Well, Mike, I really, uh, Mike, please. As Labor Day arrives and the weather slowly begins to cool and the first leaves of autumn start to turn those brilliant colors we all love, there's still only one guy we can all turn to to keep us up to speed on the who's, the what's, and the where's, and that's Chuck Larson, believe it or not, with yet another great show in this week's Spotlight. Ozark Mountain Bigfoot Conference. September 15-16, Ozark, Missouri. Conference Spotlight. For this week's conference, we head to the Ozark Mountains for the Ozark Mountain Bigfoot Conference and Expedition, hosted by the Ozark Mountain Sasquatch Team. Come join Shane Carpenter and Randy Harrington as they lead a Bigfoot expedition on private land with guest speakers Daniel Perez and Dr. John Morley. Tickets are $25 when purchased in advance or $35 day of. Primitive campsites are available as well as breakfast and dinner with the OMS team and guest speakers. The regular expedition is Friday and Saturday, September 15th and 16th, including the conference on Saturday. Or there's an extended expedition starting 12 p.m. on Wednesday, September 13th, that also includes Saturday's conference. The conference will be held at the Christian County Elks Lodge in Ozark, Missouri, starting at 10 a.m. and running until 4. There's limited space for the expedition and for the conference, so if you're interested in either of these events, get your tickets now. They're going fast. For more information, you can go to the BigfootEvents.com webpage or the Festival Facebook page. And that's this week's Conference Spotlight. Brendan, back to you. All right, folks, it pains me once again to say that we are all out of time for this week's show. I'd like to thank you for watching and remind you to like and share everything we do here at the Catskill Appalachian Research Collective. Tell your friends. And if you have any questions or comments, or maybe a story for the show, you can always drop us a line at this week at Bigfoot Newscast at gmail.com. So until next week, for Mike Lucci and Chuck Larson, I'm Brendan Brown, reminding you that when it comes to getting your Bigfoot news, be informed, not biased. Take care. See you next week. <laughs>